Okay, here's what I've come up with so far since I'm not happy about the stock tire. So if I line up the stock tire with the um, the crushers, it's about an inch and three quarters smaller in size. Now what I found I could do, since the small, stock tires are so stretchy, is I managed to make it bigger where it's only it's actually less than an inch so I'm getting the size of the the crusher but I'm getting the width of the stock tire I guess what I don't understand right now is if I'm gonna be able to crawl with this tire or not but I definitely have been successful in making it stand up taller uh, the sidewall as you can see versus stock stock tire see how much bigger it is and see how much bigger the sidewall is and it doesn't have much for flex so I'm going to be depending on the suspension a bit more than with this tire and it's possible I can't crawl as well so I guess we'll see that out let's figure that out because um, this is a really soft rubber compound so I'm wondering if it would crawl as well and be an overall better basher tire but I definitely like the size better and I definitely like the fact that it doesn't compress as well. Okay, hey, first we're going to remove this bead lock. Okay, with the bead lock removed, or the fake bead lock removed, uh, now we're going to break down the tire glue. I do this with a heat gun, um, and I will set it to, uh, usually if you do this in the oven, I notice people do it about 350, so I've been going about 400, 410, and uh, just heating it up. When it's hot enough, I've noticed you'll get a little puff of smoke from the tire, like it's actually starting to burn. Okay, it's been about two minutes, I got this all heated up. What you start to see is there's a little bit of smoke wafting off the tire. Uh, that usually means it's about done there. Now what I've found is it's usually best to wait a little bit and let that heat dissipate into the tire after you get this smoking effect. So I'll just go ahead and flip it over and do the other side. Okay, so the heat seems to transfer to one side to another because this side doesn't take as long. And we've got the smoke coming up off the tire here. So we'll see if we can break down the glue. There's a few spots that didn't quite go. Just uh, pull out the heat gun and do it a bit longer. Back to 410. 
10. Okay, I heated it one more time. See if those last spots get away. heat gun um, I said it takes less than 10 minutes but more than five uh, I find that quicker than boiling and it doesn't affect the foams in any way so it seems to work uh, fairly well on to the next step okay so we'll take the tire off the rim this whole thing's pretty hot Check your rim to make sure that you didn't oval anything. Uh, looks pretty good. If you did, you might want to push on it a bit to try to make sure that it retains its shape. See some discoloration in the foam uh, from water and mud. Uh, this one's actually in not bad shape. It has lost a lot of its strength though, and that's why the tire doesn't sit up properly. You just hit on the ground, there's a bunch of dirt that comes out. Uh, these do deteriorate. I had my Emacs ones out, and they were just mush inside after three years. This is, old, this is less than a year old, so it's not bad, but it is starting to break down. The edge is gone on it, um, and overall not doing its job. You can actually see it's flatter here than it is here. Probably it sat on the shelf like this on the tire. Anyways, these things do not hold up if you run in a lot of, of water like I like to. So let's uh, take a look at supersizing and fixing that problem. Okay, now that you've got the tires all off and the foams all out, um, need these sheets. They're 12 by 12, so 12 by 24, and we've got six of them, so three layers, two each. And then what I did, I just rolled them up nicely to make a tube. Use some tape to uh, hold it in place for while you put it in the tire. this last piece of tape, keep it about three inches from the end, because you want to cut off about two or three inches. Okay, you could end up with something like this, about 21 inches long, six sheets rolled up in a bun. So make four of those. Okay, before you get too far, uh, line up the tires with the rims on the side uh, that goes out and make sure you've got two tires that match each other's tread pattern on each of them. Otherwise you may end up with your tires on improperly. They do have a direction to them. Um, pretty easy for me to tell. Mine have got all these cuts on the outside. 
which uh, when I took them off the rim, that glue broke down too. So all the cuts that I have in my tire will have to be uh, re-glued as part of this process too. Okay, now that we've got that, set these aside for a minute. Keep the tire the way you want it. Take your insert and put it inside. So if you measured everything right, it should fit more or less end to end in there, as you can see it. Um, play with it so it's kind of even all the way around. So do make sure those ends butt up against each other, otherwise you'll have a gap in your tire. And then the way I like to do it is to place uh, the rim in. Recognizing that was a twin to this, so I turned it over. Again, make sure you got the right side with all the nicks in it matching the tire. Let's start fitting it in. And these tires are pretty uh, flexible, so you just push out as you go around the rim. See if you can get it in without popping any bubbles. One step closer to a supersized tire. Push all, all the bubble wrap down in there so it's sitting right inside, and then you can start to get your your bead in. So this is slightly tighter fitting than it was stock. So I think when we glue it we're gonna have to push down. Try to get the tire to sit in there properly. But get it pretty close for now as a starting point. In all the way around. Then you're one step closer to your supersized tire. Pretty good. Okay, now that we got the bubble wrap inside there and we got the tire on, uh, I'm gonna start gluing these things. Place the bead all the way around. Hold it in place, I think. Okay, so we got all the rims glued on now. Um, just going back and touching up a few spots where they're a little loose. And then you have to also um, glue you all those cuts that were previously in the tires. 
to get those to stick back together. Okay, hey, here's Project Supersize mounted on the truck. Uh, as you can see, the one on the left is the supersized tire, on the right is stock. You can see the big difference is how it sits flat. Uh, the contact patch is smaller on the supersized tire and it's much larger on the stock tire. But again, the stock tire has got too much sidewall flex for almost any situation but rock crawling. And these I guess we'll have to see, uh, as far as height measurements, what we achieved. Uh, these ones to the table, really close to seven and a half. And again, on there, and just coming over to stock here. God, it's not even six and a half. So we almost gained a full inch with this process. Um, the suspension sitting about the same, so about four inches to the tub versus four and three quarter. So definitely we've got the tires larger, there's no doubt about that. Uh, are they better handling or better tire overall? That remains to be seen, I'll have to do some uh, testing. As far as width, came up pretty darn equal. Uh, that's camera perspective, whichever one's closest looks biggest, but uh, they're pretty close to the same width. Um, which, uh, 